bakers. Today on Baking with the Iron Maiden, I'm going to show you how to make rolls. These are perfect dinner rolls. There's a lot of different things you can do with the shape to change up the bread. And I'll probably do another episode showing you how to shape the bread into different shapes and designs. I'm going to be making hamburger rolls and hot dog buns today. This is a recipe from my favorite cookbook, The Wise Encyclopedia of Cookery. It's an old cookbook, but it's got some great recipes in it. I've adapted the recipe a little bit for modern ingredients. So, before I get started, I'm going to get my bowl ready to put the dough in. I've already greased that with some Crisco. Uh, you want to make sure that you put in enough grease to cover the bottom of the bowl uh, with a little bit extra so that when you turn, put the dough in, you can turn it over and have the top of the dough coated. Since I'm making hamburgers and hot dog rolls, I'm going to be using the corn stick pans for my hot dog buns. I've got a biscuit pan here and just a regular skillet that I can make the plain rolls in. You'll want to grease those as well. I like to use a pastry brush for greasing. I think it's easier to get in the corners and the crevices on these corn stick pans. So for our ingredients, I've got a quarter cup of sugar. Five cups of plain all-purpose flour. I like all-purpose, not bread flour for this. I've already put that in my bowl. Make sure when you measure your flour that you stir it up a little bit. If you don't stir it up or scoop it, you can end up uh, with too much. You can also weigh your flour. I've got one package of Fleischmann's yeast. Now, if you're using yeast out of a jar like that, that would be two and a quarter teaspoons or seven grams of yeast. I've got one and a half teaspoons of salt. Two eggs. Always remember to break your eggs into your own bowl. It makes it much easier to get the shells out if there's any shells in there. I've got a half cup of warm water. I've got a cup of milk. I'm using 2% today, but you can use whole or 1% milk. I've scalded the milk. That means I've heated it to just below boiling. You'll get a slight skin on the top of the milk. Scalding does change the protein structure of the milk a little bit, and it makes it a little more bread friendly. I've also got an eighth of a cup of liquid vegetable oil. And if you want, you can add some sesame seeds or poppy seeds to the top of your buns. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to do the all-in-one method. So I'm going to put everything in the bowl and mix it. I'm using my dough hook for this. If you do not have a dough hook, what you would do is take about half of your flour out mix everything else well, and then use a spoon to stir in the rest of your flour and knead it. But I'm going to go ahead and actually I'm going to put the salt and the sugar in with the water and milk and just stir that up to distribute those around. You do need to let your milk cool down to lukewarm. It should be cool enough that you can kind of stick your finger in it. I heated it a minute or two ago when I was getting set up, so it's about ready now. I'm going to put my yeast in with my flour, and we'll just give that a slight stir. My dough hook, and I'm going to beat my eggs up a little bit before I add them to everything. So just take a fork or whatever and just get the eggs beaten up a little bit. So we can pour in our milk. Our oil. Our eggs. And we've got everything in there now. And we'll just put this on the mixer stand and turn on our dough, add our dough hook. And again, like I said, if you don't have a dough hook, just use about half the flour and mix it up and then stir in the remaining flour. So I'm going to put this on a low speed, about two for just a minute until everything is combined. Okay, once you get all the flour mixed in, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to turn my mixer off. I'm going to put a towel over it. I'm going to let it set about 10 minutes. 
Uh, I found if you don't rest the dough at this point, it can end up a little tough. So we're going to set our timer for 10 minutes, then we'll come back in here and we'll knead the dough good. Okay, it's been 10 minutes, so I'm going to turn my timer off. I'm going to come over here, take my towel off of my bread, and I'm going to go ahead and start kneading the bread. Now, if the bread looks really, really soupy or loose, you can add a little more flour. Depending on the size of your eggs, the amount of flour you need can vary a little bit. So uh, I'm going to turn this on. And this is pretty sticky looking, so I'm going to put about another quarter cup of flour in there. And then we're going to turn this on and we're going to let it knead for about 10 minutes until it's smooth and elastic. So make sure you leave, do not leave your mixer unattended. This can start to walk as it's kneading and it can walk off the counter if you're not careful. So let me go ahead and set my timer for 10 minutes. And we'll let the bread knead for about 10 minutes, and I'll see you back here then. You can see how sticky the bread is there right now. It'll be nice and smooth when, uh, and all cohesive when it's done kneading. 10 minutes. And as I said, remember to always watch your mixer. They do like to walk. But you can see if you look down in there how it's all come into a bowl. It's not sticking to the sides of the bowl anymore. So we're going to turn that off, take our mixer out, and we'll put it on a little bit of a floured counter here, or work surface, and just going to get the dough off the hook and then out of the bowl. And now we'll get it out of the bowl here, and let me just get the rest of the dough out of the bowl. No point in wasting it. Better to feed your family than the garbage disposal or the trash can. Okay. So I'm just going to take and I'm just going to give this a few quick kneads by hand. These bench scrapers are really nice if it's starting to stick to the surface to So I'm just giving it a quick knead by hand. Nice, soft, beautiful dough here. Still a little loose, but that's going to be okay. So now I'm going to take, I'm just going to drop this down into the bottom of my bowl, and I'm going to smush it around some, and then I'm going to flip it over, and just make sure that the top of the dough is coated with some oil there, and that will help keep it from getting a skin on it. So we're going to let this sit for about an hour until it's doubled in size. Uh, depending on the temperature of the house and whatnot, that might take a little less, might take a little longer, but we'll let it get to about a double in size and then we'll punch it down and shape it. See you back here then. All right, it's been about an hour. Look how nicely our dough has risen. It's all the way to the top of the bowl. I'm simply going to punch the dough down and set it aside and now what I want to do is I'm going to grab off chunks of dough and I'm going to roll out my hamburger buns and my hot dog buns. Now I found I really like to use my little scale here to weigh the dough. I think it's a lot easier to get a keep them even and get the nice size. So uh, and I've just put a little piece of wax paper on the top of the scale to keep the dough off the scale. For the hot dog buns, I want about 80 grams. Oops, that's a little much yet. Oh, maybe just under three ounces. So we're just going to measure out until we get to about 80. 79, I'll give it one more little pinch here. So once we get 80 grams, we're going to take the dough and we're just going to work it a little bit, just kind of stretch it some, make sure all the air bubbles are out, tuck in those ends if needed, and stretch it out some, and we're just going to drop it in our pan here. 
and we're going to let it rise. And then I'm going to scrape off another 80 grams. If you're having a hard time getting the dough to stretch out some after you've worked it a touch, just let it rest a minute and it'll stretch again once, once you let it rest a minute. So like I said, I'm just going to measure off 80 grams at a time for my hot dog buns. And just kind of, you know, just you just want to stretch the dough a little bit, knead out any air bubbles in it, make sure it's reasonably smooth. And then we'll give it a little roll and a stretch. And drop it in our pan. So that needs just a little more stretching. If you don't have a nifty pan. If you don't have a nifty pan like that, just shape them like this and just line them up on a baking sheet and they'll be fine. This just kind of helps to uh, get the shape. They're a little over six inches long. I got a, this is a six inch measure. So they're just over six inches, almost six and a half, almost seven inches. Now for my hamburger rolls, I'm going to measure out a little bit less. That was 80 grams, like two and three quarters ounces. For my hamburger rolls, I only want about 60 grams or two ounces. Okay, so 60 grams. Now for these, to shape your hamburger rolls, if first of all, if you find the dough is sticking to your hand, you can add a little bit of oil to your hand. That will keep them from sticking. But I'm going to, like I said, squeeze out any of those air bubbles and I'm just going to make a ball and I'm just going to kind of work the edges in. So I'm going to take my hand down here and pull up a little bit and push in from that side. And I'm just going to keep doing that and turning a little bit and pulling and tucking until I've got a nice ball shape. Once I've got a nice ball shape, and I do need just a little oil on my hands here. Actually, there's probably enough inside that bowl. I'm going to smush the dough a little bit into a flatten it into a disc. And we're going to drop that into one of these wells of our biscuit pan. So I'll keep doing that with 60 gram chunks for the hamburger rolls and 80 gram chunks for the hot dog rolls. And uh, I'll also probably, like I said, I'll make a few more rolls and I'll just put them same size, 60 grams, a little bigger maybe even, and we'll put them in this pan and just lay them out next to each other. So I'm going to keep shaping bread here. And uh, once it's all shaped, I will cover it with a clean towel and let it raise another uh, hour or so until it's doubled in bulk again. So stretch, roll, smooth, and that's all there is to making rolls. I will top them with a little bit of sesame seed or poppy seed, but we'll do that just before we put them in the oven. All right, I've got my bread all rolled out here, you can see. So this recipe is going to make about a dozen and a half, two dozen rolls, depending on how big you roll them out. Uh, I've just done four little rolls here in one pan. Uh, you could have made that one larger one, whatever you want. So I'm going to cover these with my clean towel. I'm going to let them set about an hour until they've doubled in size. And then we'll put, uh, for the ones we want to put the sesame and poppy seeds on, we'll do a little egg wash on them. And so those will stick before we put them in the oven. So I'll see you back here in about an hour. All right, it's been a little over an hour. I've preheated my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Made sure my shelf is in the middle of the oven and I don't have any extra skillets there. Now, for the regular rolls, these can just be popped in. You don't need to do anything else. If you want to put sesame seeds or poppy seeds on them, I've taken an egg and I've beaten it with about a tablespoon of water. And I'm just going to very lightly and gently brush the top of these rolls. If you press too hard, you're going to deflate them. So just a light wash on the rolls that I want to put the poppy seeds on. So 
So again, don't press too hard. Don't need that much, just enough to help things stick. So I'm going to do those, and I'm only going to do four of the hamburger buns. Some folks don't like poppy seeds or sesame seeds on theirs. So we'll do one, two, three, and four. So make yourself an omelet or scrambled eggs with the rest of this egg here. So I want sesame seed on mine today, so I'm just going to take and I'm just going to start sprinkling sesame seeds on the top. As light or as heavy as you want. If you don't want too many, do it a little lighter sprinkle. So, uh, I need more sesame seeds. So these are all set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop these in the oven now. And I'm going to bake them for 12 to 15 minutes. The smaller ones are going to take a little less. The larger they are, they might take another minute or two. So there, I'm going to tuck these down below just so there's a little more space between them. You don't want to crowd your pans too close together. Leave a little bit of space between things. So I'm going to set my timer for 12 minutes. Those small rolls will definitely be done then. The other ones might need another minute. I'll see you back here soon. Okay, it's been 12 minutes. These rolls are definitely done. I'll give those other ones just one more minute, I think. They look about done. I can also check the temperature. They should be between uh, 200, 210 degrees. They're a nice color though. I think they'll be pretty good. Yeah, we're, oh, we're a little over 200. We're at almost 210 there, as you can see. So the temp's good. Now for the rolls that I did not put any seeds on, I'm going to take just a little bit of butter on a towel. And I'm just going to run it over the top of those rolls lightly. Uh, you see how it shines them up, makes the bread real pretty, and it also helps to make it nice and soft. So we're going to take these, and you really want to put these on a uh, cooling rack or right in a basket with a towel for the table. If you set them on a plate, you're going to get condensation forming, and the moisture is going to make the uh, bottom of the rolls uh, kind of gunky and not nice. So let's go ahead and get these guys out. And you can see they rose up a little more in the oven. So again, I'm just going to butter the tops of the rolls that uh, didn't get any sesame seeds at it. And since I'm going to be using these for hamburgers and hot dog rolls, I want to let them cool down. So again, I'm going to put them on the cooling rack here as opposed to a plate. If I was putting them on the dinner table, I'd just put them in a basket with a uh, towel or napkin. So we can pop these guys out. And, oops, I'm going to grab another cooling rack here for the rest of those dog buns. And we'll just turn these right out on there. And we've got our hot dogs and our hamburger buns ready for the holidays. I'm just going to turn these over. There we go. All ready for your barbecue. 
I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson. If so, please like and share. Please subscribe to this channel for more good cooking with the Iron Maiden. I will be doing another video with my next time I make bread showing you how to roll the bread out into some different fun shapes. Thanks and happy baking. <music>